In this video, we're going to learn about T-points, star points, and fixing curvature. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to talk about something that should have been covered very early on, and I just sort of missed it. So when we started the design of the Subaru WRX STI, we really focused on the hood and general rules when working with forms. So we looked at four-sided patches and we started with a surface or a face and we extruded edges and that's how we started to build the car. When we did that, we learned about creasing edges and also inserting edges or beveling edges to get the creased geometry. When we look at this design, one of the things that stood out is that in order to get the creases we needed without using a crease tool, we really had to have edges that were really close together. And this causes problems because it's much harder to control the geometry and it can get out of hand really easily. So the area I wanna focus on is the door, and this is a version of the car which we want to get to. So if I hide the edges, you can see that the door no longer has the sort of wide body flare on it. If we take a look at the one that we've been working on, and you take a look at the one that's inside of the description of this video, you can see that the edges have been carried onto the door. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about ways in which we can fix this and what a T-point and a star point really is. The first thing that we need to understand is that the functionality behind what we're doing is called T-splines. And T-splines was an add-in for many CAD packages, including SolidWorks and Rhino, where it offered up some subdivided type modeling like we're looking at here. What Autodesk did when they purchased T-splines years ago is they included it in Fusion 360 as the sculpt tools. It's also inside of Inventor in a little bit of a lesser extent. Now these form tools or T-splines offer up an option for us that lets us get around the four-sided patch constraint that we're really working under. Now, in general, the four-sided patch is still what we want, but we do have the flexibility to sort of get away from that if we need to. The way that we're gonna do that in this case is by deleting edges. So we are unfortunately gonna end up with some triangular patches, but I'm gonna to try to avoid them at all costs. What I wanna do is I wanna start deleting edges on this car, and I'm gonna start with this edge here, and I'm gonna work my way forward. I'm gonna come all the way up to the door, and I'm gonna stop right there and hit delete. Now what we've done is we've created essentially what's called a T point. This is where an edge intersects in the middle of another edge, creating a T. Now, T-splines will let us do that, and a lot of other subdivided modeling programs will not. This gets really tricky, and there are some things that we can do to mitigate any of the, the outcomes that we're going to get. But let's continue deleting some of these edges. The reason that we're deleting edges is because we don't need them. We don't need the additional control on the door. So I'm going to take this edge, and I'm going to delete it as well. Next, we're gonna delete some more edges. And again, remember we are gonna end up with some triangular patches at some point, but for right now, I just wanna get rid of some of this additional control and I'll come back and I'll fix it later. So at this point, you can see that we're starting to lose control of the curvature of the door and that's fine. We are gonna come back and we're gonna fix that. But uh, as I'm looking at this, I also think that I don't necessarily need this edge at all. I'm gonna just delete it all together. And then I'm gonna take this edge here and I'm gonna delete that first part. And essentially what I'm doing is I'm trying to push back the transition. So right now we're controlling the crease and then it's sort of blending or feathering out. Then I'm gonna end up pushing some of these other edges together in order to control the curvature. So this edge and this edge are gonna come together and I think this one's probably gonna go away as well. So let's, let's delete some more and I'm gonna work my way forward and I'm gonna worry about the front in a little bit. I'm, right now I'm, I'm solely focused on the rear. And lastly, I think I'm gonna get rid of this. I can see that it's creating a pretty heavy crease on the door. We can tell by the shadowing, we have the, the light or the reflection on the top and then it sort of disappears. So we're gonna get rid of that as well. 
Now, don't be too worried about the looks just yet. We're gonna to go to Modify, Weld Vertices, and we're gonna bring these two together. Now again, triangular patches is generally not what we want, but we're gonna to try to start pushing these together. So this one is gonna to need to go away, and I'm gonna to have to create some triangular patches. I'm gonna probably pull this one down, and I'm gonna say okay for now, and then get rid of this. Go ahead and delete that. So we're not quite done. I'm gonna move these back a little bit. I'm gonna take that one and move it back. And uh, we need to do some work here in the center, but we're, we're getting there, okay? Now you'll remember this is what we're going for. This is the end result here. And you can see that we've got a triangular patch at the front. We've got a couple on the back. And if we go to the front, you can see that um, we do have a lot going on here. I'm gonna try to use weld vertices. And it is important to note that this does take a good bit of time. This is not something that, um, that sort of easily happens. Actually, let's cancel weld vertices. And I wanna show you one other trick while we're here. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that edge, leaving us with no control here. Then I can go to modify, insert point, and I can actually pick up on another point and bring it all the way back to help control the shape. So you see here that we've got two really close together. I'm gonna to go and I'm gonna turn this into a triangle. And then the rest of these I'll probably just leave for now. So again, this isn't ideal, but this does give us the, the control that we're looking for. Now, at some point, one thing that we can also do is we can delete vertical edges. And you might be wondering why we would wanna do this. Well, by deleting these vertical edges, what we're actually doing is we are resetting the curvature of the door. Basically, we're pulling it into a big flat panel. Then we can come back with insert point and connect it all the way to the bottom. And I'm gonna repeat the process with this one here. I'm gonna carry that all the way to the bottom. And now we've essentially just sort of reset the curvature that we were working with. Now this process does take some trial and error. It does take some time. You can see that at the back, um, things are not really blending how I like. I can delete some of these triangles and then I wanna go into repair body. So when we're inside of here, the star points and the T points are important. Like you can see here, we've got a star point, but essentially this is a T point. If we left click on the star, it'll turn it into a T point. And this helps us when we're trying to get these smooth patches. What I wanna do at this point is I'm gonna go back to insert point and I'm gonna carry this back in making a triangle. So now if we use control or command four, you can see we're beginning to blend uh, blend these shapes in. It's not perfect, but it is getting a lot closer. What I suggest you do is you continue working on this, carrying the curvature forward and helping to drive the transition. So I'm gonna bring this edge forward one. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna start pushing those transitions. We can always go back to box display, which can be extremely helpful. And then we can bring this a little bit closer. You might need to rotate it around uh, to make sure it's not too far in or out of the body. Sometimes you might need to pull that out. And then go back to our smooth display. And essentially what we're trying to do is we're trying to make this triangle here. So we're gonna go to insert point. Let's try to connect this as a triangle and see if we can control the, the shape of that flare. Now, generally, I, I really avoid those triangles, but again, with this car, we've got those sort of triangular sections where the fender flare sort of disappears. So now you can see that we're getting quite a bit closer, and that's the general methodology that I would use when I've got a, a model like this that has really complex curves where we really need the detail on those fender flares, but we need it to disappear on the door. Now, there are a lot of other ways that we can do this with surfacing tools, but when we're talking about these form tools or these T-spline tools, um, this is really what it comes down to is we're gonna end up making some of these, what we call T-points. I'm gonna add just a few more. I wanna carry this crease up a little bit and, and just control that transition a little better. Again, you're probably gonna have to go back to box display 
and use modify edit form and you want to bring this probably closer and then rotate it around and you want to make sure that these vertices in this case we're going to have to rotate it to grab that you want to make sure that they stay roughly in line and uh, that'll help you control uh, control that curvature and get that sort of triangle shape that we're looking for on this car so that gives us a pretty good result. The last tool that I wanna mention when working on a design like this is for us to go in and just check out tools like Straighten. And Straighten will allow us to select either surface points or control points. And that's gonna be the difference between the, the vertices that we see on the smooth display or the ones that we see on the box display. And in this case, what I wanna do is I wanna to try to straighten this out front to back. So I'm going to just begin selecting some of these vertices. And what this is going to allow me to do is to get more of a straight edge from front to rear. And we can carry this on as far as we need to. And depending on the car you're working on or the, the geometry or the design, um, this could be really helpful to sort of bring some of this back. Keeping in mind that there, um, there is some that some things that we need to worry about when we use these tools like straighten uh, because we are introducing curvature so you can see here with with this with this box display like the fender flare itself this these two edges this face likely needs to go in we need to pull it in um, and again go back and forth between box and smooth display will help you get that right but I think that's as far as I want to take this design for right now, at least in this video. And I strongly urge you to play around with these. Delete some edges and uh, try to work with those T points and those star points and just see how you can reconfigure this. This version here, um, there's a little bit too hard of a crease on this door. If you take a look at the one that uh, we started with you can see that the transition is much smoother you can see that i didn't create as many triangles back here so it does take a little bit of trial and error and playing around when you're trying to replicate something like this if you're starting on your own if you're starting a brand new design and you're not constrained by the geometry that's already been created well then you have a little bit more flexibility but for this design go ahead and carry on removing some edges, playing around with it, seeing what you can do to reconfigure that section and uh, and try to get some of those, you know, that extra additional control out that we really don't need for those large sections. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.